It's the Ricky Gervais <laughs> show. Run for the hills. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Classic. Yeah. Uh, with Steve Merchant. Yeah. Whose birthday it is today. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So, so someone was... never listened before and they heard that link. <laughs> They're thinking, great, right, it's, proper, it's proper radio yeah. at last. Oh. XFM 104.9, just gone five past one. Steve, do you want some great music I'd today? love to hear some great well, music. Well, I've brought in some good stuff. I've brought in Oasis, we've got Radiohead, sure, I've got some sure. Dre, I've got some Alba, I've got some Jimmy Webb, I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we're keeping yeah. it real. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I've got Charlatans, I've got Nirvana. <laughs> Any Sade? There's <laughs> no shame. No, that's a shame. No, but I've been looking through the library and I have found four non blondes. Brilliant. Looking Hit forward to yesteryear. <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, later, yeah, Rick. yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, it was, Carl, it was you that worked out the maths and worked out I was 28 because they just worked out I'm 27. You are 27. No way. Yeah, I, to I asked you, didn't I? And yeah, I said. Because, no, but what I sort of questioned was I said, well, if you're 27 today, that means last week you were 26. Well, well done, yeah. That's um, irrelevant. So, so therefore, you assumed that I must be twenty-eight then. Yeah. Whereas I, I assumed you were using, you know, your knowledge of maths, no, such I, as it I, is. I wouldn't do that. No, sure, sure. Wow. I, I actually got lost in that conversation because I didn't I genuinely didn't know what he meant with would mean. Last week you were twenty-six. <laughs> I don't uh, know what that <laughs> I meant. I don't know what it meant. Wow. Well, it is Steve's birthday. But and he would have been twenty-six last week. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so tells you, uh, you genuinely frighten me because it's those staring eyes. There's nothing behind them. It's this little bald head. It looks like Davros looking at me. Genuine, just genuine fear on his face when he enters into a conversation with another human but what, being. What bit don't you understand? If he was, if he's 27 today, he would have been 26 last week, and he doesn't look 26. He didn't look 26 last week. He looks older than 28 today. You've started on, on his birthday, you're still having a go at him. Carl, I don't look like the kind of hot stud that I actually am, but face facts, that's the truth, mate. <laughs> yeah, get live with, with it. it. Get with live the programme, jeez. Well, um, let's have a, let's have a little bit of cake. Okay, oh, that's appropriate. <laughs> See what birthday. it is. <laughs> you mean the band, don't yeah. you? Not the cake, you haven't actually bought a cake, have you? <laughs> Got anything at all? Okay. Cake, short skirt, long jacket, sort of fashion, sort of. Sure. Single. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I got. Uh, oh, uh, I remember, just remembered something. Right? Go on. Something like, like short skirt, long jacket. Once I was watching daytime TV. Yep. I was unemployed. It was, it was uh, the early days of you know, it was about uh, mid eighties. And uh, who was, was hosting? It was. It was sort of like one of those Eamon Holmes and someone, or like you know, oh, like right, Richard yeah. Duke, but, you know, not 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 as good, not as. Yeah. And uh, the link. She went. Well, after the break, Leo Sayers popping in. Tell us about um, clothes for the shorter man. <laughs> I stayed tuned, he came on, he went, Leo wear a short, Sayer. Yeah, he went, wear a short jacket. <laughs> Why wear a short jacket? Um, optical illusion, you're going, well that jacket, it couldn't be a foot long, because that'd be mad, so it's two foot long, so he's six foot. <laughs> so I'm looking at him there, I'm looking, don't get too close, just look at the jacket. How tall are you, Leo? Well, work it out. Yeah. This jacket's presumably about, <laughs> yeah. short, isn't it? Yeah, as an, yeah, of course it is, yeah. Yeah. But Leo, you're famously quite a short man. If I saw no. you on TV talking about clothes for the shorter man. No, but look at the jacket from there. <laughs> yep, you must be about six foot. So you had to walk around looking like a bullfighter, <laughs> just for this illusion, <laughs> like 50 paces. What's the other thing about stripes, is it? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, horizontal stripes widen you. Make um, you look fatter? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So good advice, a good fashion advice for anyone listening. On XFM 104.9. <laughs> Leo Sayer there offering some topic. We should get Leo in, maybe offer some new stuff. For your birthday, a little special Leo Sayer visit for your birthday. Oh, got any presents beautiful. yet? Got any? I've, got, I've received nothing yet. <clears throat> um, uh, but but my parents haven't come up and they're the ones that normally bring gifts. Oh yeah. yeah. They are coming up later and I, I always look forward to my um, father's gifts. Yeah. Um, because they are remarkable. <laughs> he, I, I don't know what he's thinking sometimes. I, I mean, I don't, it's like, I don't understand the logic. I mean, if I explain some of the gifts he's bought in the past, maybe you could figure out. I once opened, I think I was about 14. Right. And, um, I liked all the stuff that you like at 14, you know, the ladies, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, pop music. Yeah, sure, um, sure, sure, uh, sure. You know, fashion. Yeah. And that's why I assume, that's why he bought me, uh, on audio cassette, the collected wartime speeches of Sir Winston Churchill. <laughs> It's a, it's a good gift. Did you listen to him? Well, I, I, I'm not sure when you'd ever be in the mood to listen to that, to be honest. Fight, we'll fight on the beaches, yeah. you know, all that. All um, the classics, all the classic I, hits. I don't know when you listen. I think the, unless you're under attack, <laughs> I don't think you'd ever listen to that. <laughs> Did to you not even listen to it? I kind of stuck. But what, what, when are you going to be in the mood to put that on? No, but just because it was a gift. But I always remember being once, this was But what if you test you go, well, do you like track four? <laughs> yeah. Oh, some chicken, some neck. Oh, yeah. I love that, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think they're doing a remix. But he said to me once, he said to me, never forget, son. 
they didn't. Yeah, and I went, I don't, I don't remember, Dad. <laughs> It was mad, and it was like because he was quite into sort of, oh. but he was into like the military and all that kind of and war history oh. and stuff. So are you of, allowed to tell an anecdote about your dad on radio? Can I just give you a clue, just in case? Uh, can you tell the thing about the shed? No, okay. no, 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 right. no, 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 no. Okay, too complicated. Too okay, long. Okay, all right, all right, okay. But um, but I remember this was this was true. I remember we would. It, I had it on once because I sort of I just stuck it on because I thought I ought to. And my dad came and he was like he was pleased to see I was listening to it. And he was like and we just sort of stood there listening. And I was with my sister coming in with one of her quite attractive friends, mm. teenage friends as well. Like I'm a teenager as well. And it's like and just just this woman walking by. You know she goes to the same school or whatever. You know quite quite fit. And I'm just stood there with my father listening to we all fight them on the beaches, <laughs> never in the field of human conflict of so many. And just just remember looking at her as he passes. Just You've learned it. It's it's rubbed off. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, is is oh Rick? If you're ever in a war situation and you need some morale, come to me. Yeah, you'll just that's uh, what you're right. Quote time. me out. What about a little bit of white stripes? I'll, uh, I've got some more gifts that I can tell you about afterwards. Well, wow, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Looking forward to it. Oh Oasis, Morning Glory before that, White Stripes, Hotel Yorba. Oasis, of course. Think got in the. Uh, d have you been watching that uh, VH1 Top Hundred album? I have indeed. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, number one. Do you remember what number one was? Uh, Joshua Tree. You so, too. Yeah. Now, good album. It's not the greatest album ever, is it? Of all time. I mean, I know it's an arbitrary list, but even so. Yeah. You sort of feel comfortable with it being the Beatles or um, exactly. You know, Marvin you kind of, Gaye or, or even Pet, Pet Sounds. Sounds or exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, maybe I don't it's, think you, I don't, I don't maybe maybe it's a generation shift. There's enough people now. But yeah. it was sort of, what I found odd in the list was it's like it started off with I think it was like the Doors. I remember there was, yeah, um, was yeah. Velvet Underground and stuff. You know these kind of respected album classics. And then there was things like you know Stars, Simply Red. I mean it was a big seller and it's well produced, or whatever. But an odd choice for the greatest albums ever. And then I remember there was things like um, that that Texas album. Yeah. Is it White White on Blonde or whatever it was? And I just think what. Well, Again, is it just based on al albums that have sold well, you know, via well, the no, uh, Britannia that, Music Club? But that's that's always the thing, isn't it? So, like any any poll, like um, I remember, I think it was last year, the greatest lyrics of all time. One was imagined by John Lennon, which is mm. you know, a, 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 you know, if anything, it's a get solid there. classic. And uh, and there was like you know maybe a Dylan or another Beatles one, or and in the, two in the top five was Robbie Williams songs. Robbie Williams, songs. yeah, one well, of the worst lyricists ever. Well, uh, just not, a, not just, the worst, just a collection the, the, of words. The, yeah, just well annoying. Yeah, thing you know, uh, and uh, it was that thing. Um, uh, a man, uh, a thousand fags, you know, like that with dad, and there's gonna take you to the bridge. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. postmodern sort of. Yeah, but that's just that's a reflection of the the sheer weight at the moment, isn't it? So it's always gonna be. Um, four of all time, and then the biggest thing that year. That, you know, I suppose that, so. But that's—I mean—that's why Coldplay and Travis are getting, and they're good. But I mean, you know, I don't think they'll be at the same position next year. No, I think it, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just yeah. A, yeah. But it's just—I mean—I I get frustrated with those lists because I always—they're just—they just always seem so arbitrary. I, I think we've forgotten we're on the radio because that, that, that was a pretty boring link, wasn't it? Because we're just talking like we're alone. A lot of people probably haven't even seen the VH1 show. Yeah, not interested in the late. Are we least. losing it? Are we? You know what I mean? Listen, I'll be honest with you, Rick. I it's my birthday today. Oh, last night I went out. I got I got a little bit wasted. Yeah. So I'm I'm quite, I'm hungover this morning. I I didn't get to bed before eleven. <laughs> Right, so yeah, it's like I it's like too much no, I I am pretty I was pretty wild last night. In yeah. actual fact, and I have to say, I went to the, God knows how many units I had. <laughs> I went to the uh, Monarch in the Camden. Oh, Monarch, yeah, yeah. There was some kind of groovy night on. Yeah. I went to the door. I got a load of mates with me. I said, um, "Any uh, discount for XFM DJs?" You didn't really. Yeah, I did. I did. I, did. I was oh. a bit drunk. He went. He, he went. Who are you? I went. Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais. He went. Steve Merchant, brilliant. You can come in for free. No, he did. Yes, he did. I swear to God. He said yes, you did. He said, and I said, "What about mates?" He went. It's five pounds. They can have a pound off. He said, but, and I think basically, <laughs> but basically, Rick, I think I also agreed that you'd DJ there. <laughs> I can't remember, oh. but if, if the guy is listening, he can maybe let us know if I promise that. I might have signed something, I can't remember. Oh, God. Oh, but anyway, man. it was a good this night. It's like, sure. like a, one of those 50s sitcoms when, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you sold my soul to an angel. Exactly. Oh, how am I going to get out of this? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. So, uh, anyway, if you were good into the monarch, maybe next week, Ricky Gervais playing. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> well, that was uh, Elbow and Red off uh, Asleep in the Back. I love that. It's Great like, song. Got, got sort of early Peter Gabriel, and that's wonderful. Well, we were, we were talking about, like, your birthday and everything. And yes. Presents, and then... Then uh, I found out I'd been signed up to DJ at yes. Club in Canada. To Looking get forward you, to that. To get you in. To a I got in for free. My friends I got in that, one pound off. I was t just uh, t when the uh, 
uh, record was playing there. I said, why did you do that? Why did you try and get in free? Right? He goes, impressing my mates. Now, how impressive is it that Steve Merchant can get you in a place for a quid off? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you want to save money? Go with Steve, if they recognise him or have heard the show, you get a quid off. <laughs> that is great. I'm a quality discount. I, what, I, don't, I don't know whether it, what you like more, though, because I know you, and I, I think... It, it wasn't just the acclaim mm. and the, the fact you were, it was the pound off you liked. The money off was exciting to me. That was great. <clears throat> Any discount would have been fine. I imagine you made them all buy you a drink with a, uh, you know, Several. To, to the value of yeah. a pound. It ended up costing them a lot more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, did I, have I ever, this, this is the, probably the most embarrassing uh, of those entrance stories. Yeah. I was down in South London once, uh, went down to some party that was taking place in some kind of swanky bar, where there was a doorman on the front and a, a charge, I think it was something mental, like a tenor to go in. It was crazy, it was some, it was ludicrous. I, I don't know what I was doing down there. And I was okay, in the we'll queue. we'll establish what you mean by swanky later, because that could be... Angus and, Stankos. um, it was, uh, it was always a posh place. Was it? And so there's a queue outside, and there was one of these doormen who thought it was, uh, like, kind of Studio 54. He was, like, sort of, you know, choosing people who could come in. Yeah, you two come in now. You know, and I've been there for ages, obviously. Oh, I was no. on my own, because I got there late. and clogged. Exactly. Thought, I've dressed up for this. And there were these two girls next to me. I'm thinking, if I'm in a queue, I've told you before, if I'm in a queue and I got, if I'm stuck with two girls, you know, I'm yeah. thinking, oh, what a great opportunity, you know, use the old merchant Pick charm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I'm there, and I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of, you know, and I kind of you know, sort of give them a nod or whatever, you know, a wink. Yeah. And they're loving it. Yeah. They, they, they move to the back. They're putty in my hands, really, because you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, to really seal this off, I'll get us in. Like, I'll, I'll sort of skip the queue. So I, the guy sort of coming along, he's picking people off, the, yeah. the, the, the doorman, and I just <laughs> grabbed him, I just grabbed him like that, and I said it so everyone could hear, right? And I thought this was brilliant. He, I said to him, how much is it? He went, ten quid. I went, I'll give you seven. That was my bribe. I'll give you seven. That's the whole three pounds. <laughs> No, I, that can't be right. No. No, I, I, he must have said a fiver, and I yeah. said, I'll give you seven. Yeah. That makes more that's, sense, doesn't that's, it? That's, that's giving him a two-pound yeah, incentive. Yeah, two-pound incentive. <laughs> I'll give you seven, you can make up the ten. <laughs> exactly. You, you can, if you let me in, you can put in three yourself, mate. <laughs> that never works, does it? <laughs> he said to me... <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, um, uh, I can't be bothered, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have a kip, I think. <laughs> So was, it the, was it percentages that put you off that, that frazzled anecdote? me initially? I mean, that, it, it's a funny anecdote when you're giving him two pounds. Yeah. It's even funnier when you're, you're getting him when to he's paying stuff. me as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! Right, we're gonna we're oh. gonna play a record. Then we're really gonna concentrate. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show. Steve Merchant's also involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go to bed. Now. Oh no! Cypress Hill superstar still to come. We've got such great bands as New Order, Ash, Nirvana, Radiohead. Song for the Lovers at about uh, two o'clock is a beautiful song by Jimmy Webb, Steve. Lovely, looking forward to it. Now, it's Steve's birthday. It's XFM 104.9. He's 27. Yes. We're both a little bit hungover. Yes. Now, every link we've started hasn't really sort of... It's not know, really come to fruition, if no, I'm being honest. No, nothing's happened. I mean, sometimes there's just, they're just all out, kind of, there's just blunders in them. Yeah. Or like yeah. this one... We've already, already run aground. Yeah. I think it might be a mixture of us, like, we've been on this station for a little while, we're, we're losing the will uh, to live. Bored. <laughs> but we're going to buck up our ideas. Can I just ask a I quick question? I said buck up, by the way, just Can in I case. Can a quick question? A quick question, though, because, Someone I mean... listening to answer complaining. My, um... My birthday today, and, and therefore last night I went out, and, you know, that's why excuse for being a little bit tired and a little bit hungover. Yeah. What's your excuse? Because you didn't come out. No, I know. I, was... I mean, you conscious you had the show today. What were you doing? Staying at home, just drinking? Yeah. I had a little uh, a couple, I mean, me and Jane went what time to say goodbye to, to someone, about one. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, no, I mean, it's your name all over the show. You know, I'm a nobody, I've got no reputation. Yeah. Although, Hopefully. you get a quid off in most clubs <laughs> in Camden. enough. I think, just just <laughs> drop me. If, if anyone out there, if you're sort of like like tall, sort of, I'll answer your birthday, but I've just got to do a description. This is purely, this is nothing nasty. It's pretty sweet. If you're sort of like a, a, a lanky sort of geek, um, <laughs> and you, you know... <laughs> You can do a worse accent, then maybe you can pretend to be Steve Merchant and get in the quid off. Is that right? That's fine, yeah. No, because no. some people would take that as a personal... That's offensive. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. So, we were talking about... Pre should we play a record? Is that link too long already I'm before already we actually got to summer? I'm already bored. Carl, we've got to get to something. We've got to do Carl, something. why don't you contribute something? You've been silent. Now, that is scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> really like, is, we're it? in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, we're failing. Who can we, who can we bring on that surefire... 
always delivers audio snappy. dynamite. Yeah. Carl, the big guns. <laughs> Come on, Carl. No, I was just thinking there is nobody else who looks like Steve. <laughs> He's done you. That's outrageous. <laughs> Although, but, to be honest with you, that insult has resurrected things. Yeah. Well done. Play a little tune. Oh, huh. And then we've got, got a little back. bit of a sniffle as well, I think. Yeah. Cold or something could be coming on. <laughs> bit late there, Carl. You should come in a bit earlier there. Swayde there. Um, what well, I like is the complete lack of professionalism on our part. Yeah. It's like we've got a bit of a headache, a little bit yeah. tired, just, that's it then. You can't <laughs> fight that, you can't <laughs> fight that. But, I mean, the thing is, as you well know, Rick, there are certain DJs on this station, you know, drunkards, there's at least two I know of who are smackheads. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they, they still uh, manage, but they, they still manage uh, to yeah, do but even the, show, even yeah. the ones that aren't, that <laughs> try their best, are rubbish. <laughs> that's true enough, I'm not saying, I'm not saying we're still not the best. Yeah. And it's effortless for us, Rick. I know, you know, yeah, yeah. We're coming up with dynamite stuff here. Yeah, I know. You know we're not even, you know, fighting on all cylinders. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, a right. little bit hungover. Mm. We all are, mm. but he's, mm. he can't really take it. He's a little, <laughs> he's a little Light, you know. Wait, there is some um, tickets to give away, Rick. I don't know if we should mention that. What, who, who is it for? Joe Strummer. Oh, yeah. Uh, and his band, The Mescaleros, play Brixton Academy, we think, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more information will probably be... <laughs> so go me. along, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> if you say you're Steve Merchant, pound off. <laughs> well, the doors are uh, s uh, at 7 o'clock, and it's 17 pounds. Pounds fifty, unless you've won the competition, Rick. That I'm about to set and yep. won, a, won yourself a pair of tickets. Um, there is someone right in America celebrating a birthday today. Okay, yeah, more same, than one. Same day I as think, me. Yeah, no, 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 no. but there's a Go specific on. one I'm thinking of. Right, his name, Rick, is Dwight Schultz. Okay, yeah. If you know the answer, obviously don't give it away. Yeah, his name's Dwight Schultz. Uh, he's an actor. Yeah, he's particularly big in the eighties. Yeah. And he's also celebrating a birthday today. You're going to say, what's his name? I'm going to say, what character is he best known as? What TV character is he best known as? And you can win yourself some tickets for Joe Strum and the Mescaleros at the Brixton Academy. Dwight Schultz. American actor, TV character of the 80s, very famous. Oh, yeah. Think. See, Christian's giving away uh, a trip to Salem, Massachusetts. That's bizarre, actually, because I was in America recently and I went to Salem, Massachusetts, and yeah. that's not a prize. And it, Believe me, if you, I mean, we were there, we were sort of obliged to go because we were at someone's birthday. It's rubbish. Really? I mean, that's a really poor trip. That's such a boring He's probably, he can probably can't believe his luck. It's, it's a, probably the biggest thing Christian's ever had to give away. Thing about, and you've just dissed it. The great thing about Salem, Massachusetts is I that. I don't think we're, I don't think we're good for this station. I don't think we're selling this station like we should. Well, you know, it's, it's its own fault, you know, it shouldn't have hired us. <laughs> I blame it, you know. Yeah, and paid us in advance. Yeah. They're lucky we turn up. No, I went to uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and this is the place that's famous from, like, Salem's lot, and, uh, the Salem witch hunts famous. Uh, uh, the famous for all things Salem. Salem. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. with Salem in the title, the that's what it's place, famous for. The whole yeah. place has gone mad over, like, witches and yeah. anything. Basically, it's like, there was the Salem witch hunts in, like, 17-something or other, or 16-something yeah. or other. <laughs> so the whole place now is just full of, like, people dressed as witches. Yeah. And then it's, like, any supernatural stuff. So that I went in, and it was amazing. It's quite... Like a Glastonbury going. tent. It was a... Yeah, it's, it's like, it's awful. Everything, every single place there, every single shop is kind of horror related yeah and i went to the um boris karloff world of terror <laughs> yeah right? it's it... amazing you went in there right? i don't know if boris the famous horror actor has actually been involved but you go in there you walk in the door you've got to put these 3d glasses on right and it's supposed to be this kind of chilling ver journey around this kind of uh, like a sort of uh, a crypt you know and you put these glasses on and i <laughs> i couldn't tell they were so poor i couldn't tell what was supposed to be a 3d effect and what was actually three-dimensional really in real so i couldn't tell if like the floor was actually sloped or if it was just appeared to be yeah whether the wall was actually kind of knobbly or whether it was <laughs> three uh, it was so much and it was it literally took about 45 seconds to get through it imagine and you just that. came out blinking into the dark into the light again it was so rubbish. you you so i just want i just want to throw this over to carl so there's steve merchant with funny glasses on in this place horror and he's walking around mm. do you think he scared people carl I've I've set this question out, haven't I? <laughs> I, know, I've, I know, I've, I've, I I've loaded the question. I know I'm... the answer you're fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you just want to have a dig at me? Because it's coming up to two o'clock, and you've not really put a lot of uh, effort in today, slagging I me off. Do it on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, he's, he's just he's just an honest northerner, and he can't lie. He's like George Washington, but without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah, Salem. <laughs> um, I didn't mean We've to say... We've lost it again, haven't I, we? You Rick, didn't mean to say I Salem. Mean, say <laughs> Salem. This, this is such bad that radio. Just this the is word really... Was in the tip of my I tongue. mean, genuinely, this is bad radio, it's awful isn't it? Radio. A quick. Oh, yeah, my mate went to one of those things um, uh, in the West End where you walk around and it's aliens and they jump out at you. Right. Right? And <laughs> he was so scared with the alien jumped out. I mean, he ripped a bit of his face off. 
And well, the, the aliens face off. Yeah, it was foam, and the bloke went, "Don't do that, mate." <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Well, I, in the in the Salem one, I was wandering around, and this was one guy that kept jumping out. Yeah. Because there was about ten of us, I was at the back. I always missed him jumping out. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got around, I I missed all the frights. I mean, was oh no! He'd at least like, you'd have thought he'd like jump out, then double around and jump out again. For yeah. The, for people. Uh, everyone the ma- catch that? <laughs> no, no really, what are you doing? We. <laughs> all right. Okay. Move on. <laughs> Oh, if you want to win those tickets, 08700 800 1234. Dwight Schultz, who is he better known as? Yeah, Basement Jacks, they're keeping it real. Where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah, here? I know what they're saying. They're saying, where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah, XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. Now, um, I just one thing I would say, Rick, is that. I've spoken to a few people who've listened to the show, and a lot of people, you know, this is the highlight of their week. <laughs> it really is. No, a lot of bedbound people, and you know, yeah, and and we're not putting, the, we're not really not putting the effort, in, are we? We're providing nothing. We're trying, but it's just not coming out right. We're just the words it, aren't coming out. As, when I say them in my mind, they're brilliant. But it's sort of like getting old. You know, your mind. I, you know, I still want to run upstairs and things, mm. but mm. I just I the lift. Mm. I'd like to run upstairs. I just yeah. I just can't anymore. And I I feel like today I really the comedy's in there. There's, the interesting fun, things humor, and the co- and it's, it's all stuff. in the head and it and it has to go via the mouth. Yeah, that's and the, the and, um, it's just not it's just not working for me. Not but it is your birthday, you're twenty seven. Happy birthday. Thanks. We're talking about can I tell you one of the best presents I ever had? God. Cool. About without doubt, all I ever wanted was a go kart. This is true. I was about like, right. you know, sort of five, six, seven. And I eventually for um Christmas um I I, I I wasn't sort of spoiled in the sense that I got pocket money, but I always got what I wanted at Christmas eventually. Because, right, right. you know, like, you know, working class mothers, they, they'd they get it out of the catalogue and pay for it for the rest of the year. So, I, yeah. you know, I always got, I had, you know, really, you know, as many presents as anyone else. And I got this go-kart. It was a little red go-kart, and it was a pedal one. And I'd run home from school, and I'd be in it, and I'd get up and down the garden for hours. I'd have to come in for my tea, and it, this was fantastic. And this went on for like weeks and weeks and went through the summer. Through it, the next time, it was just uh, it was fantastic go kart. I'd show off, and uh, and then one day I came home and I went. It was always at, at, at the back of the shed, sort of up against the shed. And I went in, I, I couldn't see it, and so I went to the back door. My mum was sort of like washing up with that, and I went, "Where's my go kart?" I thought it hasn't been nicked. She went, "Your dad swapped it." Your dad swapped it. Yeah. I went, he what? And I was going to be brave, and I went, he what? She went, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. And I could see she didn't approve of this, and she was thinking, I'm going to tell him, and then I'm going to, you know, you know, have this out. And I went, right, she went, it's your wheelbarrow. And I went to the back of the shed, oh. and there was this wheelbarrow. He swapped it with a bloke called Jimmy Dublin, who he worked Jimmy with. Jimmy Dublin? Yeah, I don't know. Was, I, I don't think he was a respectable <laughs> member of the community. <laughs> he was fine. It was his livelihood. No, he was, he, I think he was an Irish gentleman. And that's why we called Jimmy. <laughs> that's I, don't, I don't know what his real name was. And uh, I think my dad must have been drunk. And he went, you know, I want to get my son a go kart. And my dad said, well, well, um, we've, it, my kid's got one. He's probably had it for a year. He's probably bored with it. Yeah. And he said, I'll, I'll give you this wheelbarrow. And I went to this wheelbarrow and it was caked in concrete. I could hardly lift it. I just nicked off a building site, obviously. <laughs> and. I'd be there for how- hours trying to push this wheelbarrow up and down <laughs> the garden, right? <laughs> and uh, it was okay though, because I was going on holiday soon, and I am um, seven years running, went to Bognor Regis, a place called Riverside, because some woman around the uh, uh, way had a, uh, a caravan that um, we got free for a week, and uh, it was great, um, it was just wonderful. And uh, I, I used to go there with my mum and my nan. <laughs> oh, party time! It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the age of seven to sort of go. No, it's good because you know when, you, when you're a kid and you wake up in a strange place, and it sort of seems weird. You wake up at three o'clock in the morning hearing your grand pissing in an iron bucket, <laughs> and you know you We've get all been there. you get you get this orientated. Anyway, and that went on day, and uh, uh, I met a, 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 a little friend who was about my age. We were both sort of like, right? and he'd hired a go kart. He had this great go kart, and he came round. He came round to my caravan, and uh, <laughs> I went. I've got a go kart. And my mum, I remember my mum opening the window of the caravan and going, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil. And I went, I, I, I had a go-kart, I had a go-kart. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever talk to your father about the fact you swapped it? <laughs> no. You never mentioned it to him? No, no. Have you still no. got that wheelbarrow? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've grown into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can nearly lift it now. Yeah. Yeah, and now I'm just too old to run up and down the garden yeah, with now it. Now you get one of your several gardeners who <laughs> use it all the time. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Dre there. Dr. Dre. Of course. Bad intentions. Well, 
It's a, oh, do you want to give the winners of the competition? The winners, yes. Uh, tickets for Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros playing at Brist Brixton Academy this evening. We have some lucky winners. The question I set was, someone else famous is celebrating a birthday today. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean someone other, someone else famous like I'm famous and someone else who's You famous. could probably get into the monarch. Well, pound off at least. Yeah. And uh, I said, yeah, which uh, actor, Dwight Schultz, no, I didn't. I said, which character did Started Dwight off Schultz well, play? didn't it? It started off so well. Which character did Dwight Schultz play? What made him famous in the 80s? Yeah. He's celebrating a birthday today. I don't know how old he is. Probably in his 60s. <laughs> Not in his <laughs> 60s. The character he played, of course, was Howling Mad Murdoch yeah. from the 18. We did, it, watching, we did um, accept Murdoch. I was watching an 81 UK Gold the other day because I always like to have something, you know, so I can talk to Camfield whenever I meet him. Yeah. And yeah. uh, the thing about Howling Mad Murdoch is, uh, his madness is one of those convenient kind of madnesses where he's not like kind of depressive, where he's trying to kill yeah. himself, or he's just schizophrenic, or he's unreliable. He's just a bit eccentric. Yeah. His madness is largely, I'll do some funny voices. You couldn't have, um, um, howling slightly off the wall Murdoch, no. though, could you? It didn't, it didn't have the edge. But it's just, it's rubbish. It's rubbish madness. Or <laughs> howling wacky Murdoch. Yeah, well that's what he is, he's wacky. Uh, howling annoying student mm. Murdoch, I mm. think he should have been yeah, called. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. the winners, Carl, I think you took some answers. Uh, Tim and Neil. Well done, Tim and Neil. Are they going together or are they? No. No, two separate. Lucky people, lucky people. Yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Wait, 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 I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, when yeah. people are being miserable around you? Yep. I, I was full yep. of beans when I came in. Yep, here. yep, yep. yep yeah, but you yep. got to remember last week, you were really miserable and that really wound me up. Yeah, because he was dumb so to do stuff. Because, you know, he'd been let down and they were worried about yeah, the next show. You were in a terrible mood. Yeah, yeah. look at me like you were. Songs. I wasn't like going off oh, and lying on the settee, looking ill, <laughs> talking, talking in that voice. <laughs> oh, he's done you yeah. again. I said, I said, just now, being quite friendly. Yeah, Carl, Steve. Carl, have you ever tried to get into the monarch for free? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, mate, it's not going to happen for you. <laughs> Come out with me, mate, you got to quit off. <laughs> all right? Oh. When well, you can get in places in Camden for free. Oh, yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's done you. Oh. Right, now it's time for Song for the Lovers. Now, this is one of my favourite songs of all time. You'll know this song better done by... <laughs> that was nearly a sentence. Oh, come on, that was nearly a sentence. Huh. What's his name? Glen Campbell. It's Galveston. Oh, yeah. This is the man who wrote it. This is the original. This is Jimmy Webb. Oh, yeah. With Galveston, I th from what I can work out, I think it's about a bloke who goes off to the Vietnam War and he's missing um, his bird. And uh, I've brought it down, haven't I? I've brought it down a tone by saying "bird." It's a beautiful song. It was irony. Just play it, Galveston. It's beautiful. Jimmy Webb with Galveston. Now I know you enjoy. Love the work of the Webb Meister. A lot of people, of course, be familiar with his sons, the Webb brothers. Yeah. Yeah, very different. Quite cool, though. I, I went to see him live, and he was just so cool. Mm. Just, like, doing his songs and telling a little anecdote. It was just... He's, he's, he's fantastic. That's my song for the lover. Steve, what um, have you got for well, us? Well, no, I was just going to mention a couple of other gifts that my father uh, got. Well, well, he got me once. I unwrapped once, having professed no interest ever in this particular uh, artist, about as much interest as um, Winston Churchill. Um, I once received, lucky me, the making of Thriller. It was a, it was a video... Behind the scenes on Thriller. I know Jackson what Hill. he thinks though. But he, he, said to me, he thinks he said, Steve, he said, Steve loves to dance. No, he went. He went. And you love music and you yeah. love films. Yeah. No, and that's a film. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I've never professed any interest. I mean, I don't think he even had Thriller, the actual film on it. It was just the making of Thriller. Really. Behind the scenes, Michael Jackson dancing and, around and John saying, Landis. Yeah, it was r rubbish. Well, well that's not blunt. very nice, is it? But what did you say when you opened it? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love Jackson. Can't wait to watch this. Can we watch it now? I said. What did he say? No. He's um, so ungrateful. Really? Yeah. Because I can't remember a time my dad bought me anything. It's always my mum who bought it, and my dad would give her the money. Yeah. You've got Ricky who's lost his go-kart. <laughs> You've had a video bought for you, and you need to stun happy. <laughs> I just think you're selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... <laughs> it's not so much that I, I appreciate the, the fact that there is a gift. I think it's the sort of, it's the fact that the gifts are arbitrary and can be bought in the shop that's opposite the place he works. Don't, don't go, well, what, what, got your yeah. mum for this. Well, Listen to this, this Carl, you'll love this. Right, yeah. it, the, it's the thought that counts, right? So I suppose if you say that the thought that counts is the fact that he went and got anything at all, that counts. Okay, mm. fair enough. But I phoned, he phoned me up, he said, what shall I get your mother, right? It's her 20th wedding anniversary, <laughs> right? What shall I get her? 
I say, well, I'll tell you this, this is a great idea I'd heard from somewhere else. Why not get, like, a pay for it to have a makeover, you know, and all this sort of treatment, you know, and the beauty treatment, and that. Mm. she'll love that, you know, and then take her out, have a, give her a meal and stuff. He went, okay, okay, okay. So he, he hangs up. I speak to him on the day of my mum's birthday. I say, what do you get? What do you get? He said, oh, I, I got something. I said, do you go for the makeover idea? He went, not exactly. I went, what do you do? He went, I bought her a trowel. <laughs> a trowel. <laughs> I went, a trowel? He went, yeah, for the garden. <laughs> I went, it's a trowel. You've been married 20 years and you've got a trowel. He went, it's stainless steel. I said, I said to him, it's a trowel, Dad. And he went, do you think I should have got it engraved? <laughs> it is mental. <laughs> and I went down to see them, right? And I went in the lounge and literally, imagine it, like, it wasn't this, but imagine, I got in there, he'd bought this trowel, right? And he'd also bought her an industrial sized tin of coffee. You know those ones, that are those big size ones you have in, in like, hotels? <laughs> I didn't say she loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve, you said. I love the fact that, that that's meant to be, like, like the whole family didn't use it. Like, she keeps that by her bed. Yeah. Like, she's in Stalag like, yeah. 13 or something. This is my coffee. But imagine that... walking into the lounge, right? She's there. <laughs> she's got the presents that my sister's bought in there. A trowel. <laughs> just holding a trowel and a tin of coffee. And me walking in wondering, I wonder if there's anything sort of that she regrets in her life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. She loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve. Oh. She loves the garden. Carl, what's the worst present you've ever had? You see, we don't really celebrate birthdays in our house, so... <laughs> what, what? Where are you from? What planet are you... What do you mean you don't celebrate birthdays? Are you here from another world observing? <laughs> Like trying to blend in, but not quite managing it's to pull it off. Not that fussed about it, right? You know what I mean, it's yeah. The mum and dads are on the same day, and I think that just was like that's a bit weird, isn't it? And their anniversary, and well, they got married on their but their mutual birthday. But Carl, can I just I'm and just Christmas? But Carl, there's a difference right. between you saying. What do you mean their anniversary's on the same day? Of course, it's on the same day. Yeah, and the, and the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, what I mean is that. You, I mean, you say that you don't really celebrate your birthday, but presumably you have received some presents at some point in your life from your parents. Or anyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll come back to you later. Yeah. Thanks. Let's play a record. Carl, have a think about that, and we'll come back to you later. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ash and Sometimes, they've won me over. They have indeed, yeah. They've just got, a, they've got, the, they've got to be the band they always wanted to be, I I'd think. have written them off in the early days, but no. Me too, Steve. Themselves. Just uh, goes to show. Go Carl, um, any thoughts on what uh, gift you've perhaps once received that you can joke about now no. but was tragic at the time no no not really put the thought in then didn't have that many presents so always thankful for what you got i was grateful for yeah rick would you love to hear from the listeners if maybe they've received some amusing gifts no no I wouldn't. um so what are you doing tonight you're going out for a little meal with your parents yeah i thought you were coming yeah right yeah, yeah. good yeah. to know yeah no. any suggestions as to where we could go i mean maybe people would like to phone in because i've got no idea it's got to be largely meat-based. <laughs> yeah. I'll only really eat meat. Do you know uh, the steakhouse uh, near me? It's closed down. Brilliant. That's it, one. There's lots more to go. <laughs> Let's not stop there, it people. Just Come on. I used to look across and think, is that a bingo hall? <laughs> I know. It's or bright. somewhere to eat? Yeah. yeah, neon. There's at the back. Right at the back, add cocktails, and you know, just imagine. Who goes in there for a cocktail? You know, imagine you going in there with a DJ sitting there. Da, 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 hey, uh, hi. Uh, da, 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 da. Go on. Carl's got something to say. No, I can tell. So, what? Is, is there a chance that your dad's like on the way into London now and has heard you saying, "Oh, yeah. he got me this and he got me that," and he could be like nipping to a shop now to buy you a rake and thought. <laughs> 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 thought yeah, uh, yeah. Just think of that. Oh. oh, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Or the yeah. making of the bends. Yeah, he'll probably turn up and say, I was going to get you a gift, Steve, but then I got high. <laughs> and we'll all laugh. <laughs> yeah. Cultural reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, right, this link has run out of steam again. <laughs> yes, but it, don't worry, because I can salvage it. Go on. Because it's time for Under the Covers. Cover me up. Oh, you got me Between covered. the covers. Between the covers. I like covers. <laughs> <laughs> Cover songs. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, this was play. done by someone else. <laughs> and it was... Uh, this week I'd like to play... Um, I mean, we're all fans of Destiny's Child, mm, Rick, mm, and we're mm. all fans of the song Say My Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have any of us heard um, the Scottish band Spare Snare doing their version of it? I, I suspect not. Let's hear it now. Oh. <laughs> Spare Snare doing their version of Say My Name by Destiny's Child. Real, what did you make of it? Do you remember Raw Sex that I used to be in um, French and Saunders? Was <laughs> Roller River on this one? Yeah. <laughs> Is that basically what it's like? It's a bit like that. Do you yeah. think maybe the cover version section's running out of steam? <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we're playing. I think we should only ever do sort of six weeks a year on radio. Right. And then 
you know. Yeah, it, it, people will kind of remember that. <laughs> It'll be beautifully preserved in their memories. Yeah. You know, like, like Benny um, Hill used to do one show a year. Right. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Imagine yeah. how awful it would if he'd like, I'd, I'd do it ev <laughs> every week for two hours. I don't yeah. think he'd have been so successful, to be <laughs> honest, Steve. I think he'd, he'd run out of ideas. Rick, I know that you are tired of coming in every Saturday and doing the show. I know I am, and I yeah. suspect many of the listeners are. But maybe we should leave it to the listeners. You know, if they want us off the air, maybe they should just email fax, phone That'd in. be... Oh, I think everything should be like that, though. Vote yeah. whether you want to, you know, like a binary sort, like, mm. you know, up against someone knocks... Like, like, winner stays on in pool. Yeah. I hate that, winner stays on in pool, in pubs. It's just I horrible it. fascist, isn't it? You yeah. want to play with your mates. You don't want to exactly. have to beat a bloke with one tooth who just yeah. plays pool all day. Yeah. yeah. Costs him nothing, and he has 93 games. Of course you're not going to beat him. He's a professional by the end of the evening. Okay, XFM uh, 104.9. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> For Hero by Les Fleur. Great bloke, Les. Yeah. Work with him in Blackpool. <clears throat> Weird. Have like. very high voice. Can't yes. grow a beard. Yes. But, uh, yeah. I'm joshing. Probably not. pronounce Les Fleur, innit? Les Fleur. Yeah. We, we, know we, oh, we know that. Oh, we know that. We know that. We know that. You noticed all those huge posters um, advertising Christian O'Connell's breakfast show? Uh, they're all over the place now. They're mainly on the tube, like you wouldn't know, Gervais. No. What with your driver and everything. <laughs> um, imagine if they'd spent the kind of money they must have spent on those advertising our show. I know. And those people were tuning in, and today's show is what they heard. I, I was actually thinking, right, um, because uh, we do sort of, we do care in a way. Yeah. We couldn't get over it today, you know. Just to, just a word to the kids, this is what al alcohol can do to you. <laughs> it's yeah. It's a sobering lesson. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I thought, what if this was our first ever attempt at radio? Think how gutted we'd be. We'd go, we're just, this is, we're well, not what right. What worries me is it's like, I don't know, it's like in my sort of hangover state, it's like I've kind of woken from a dream. And I've sort of thought to myself, all the stuff we're saying today is what we normally say week in, week out. And we think it's brilliant. And it's today yeah, oh. we've done it. And it's rubbish. Oh, that... and, we, and it's like we've seen the truth. Oh, yeah. It might be. See, I, it, yeah. So an alcohol can just like, just not as interesting or entertaining as we thought. See, yours could be BSE as well, though, because I know There's you're worried about that. In, I think. Yeah, because yeah. you just you just ate beef, didn't you, for for the first <laughs> fifteen largely, years? Largely just beef, yeah. Beef and milk, yeah. mainly uncooked. It was just you know, <laughs> they just wheel a Often cow in from the cow. Yeah, just just suckle it from the cow. Now we're going. We get complaints about that. We will indeed. I always wondered um, if Bruno Brooks ever got complaints. Actually. Um, when he once played Rage Against the Machine, killing in the name of, yeah, and I'm, he must have dozed off or something because he didn't realise uh, all the swearing. You know, f you, I won't do what you told me, and he just left it playing. He probably wasn't, and listening. it was the UK top forty, and it was just you know. He probably, yeah, of course, he, he probably did get complaints. Where is he now? <laughs> Good point. Doing internet radio, which is of course where we'll be next week. Yeah, if we if we buck our ideas up. Um, quick question. Go on. I just realised who Carl looks like. Moby. He does. Not the first person to say yeah, that. Yeah, it suddenly just dawned on me then. Yeah. So if Moby's really one of those people that I think is fantastic. Every time I see him, everything he says I agree with is yeah. is, is yeah. lovely. And I just can't get into his music. It's bad. It's like, it's like I feel that it's like a mate you can't say, oh, I give it up. Because I think he's he's fantastic. And I want to go, why don't you do something else? Mm -hmm. For more I bored myself. I bored myself then. If you've this got a pop star that you'd like Ricky Gervais to pass, comment on. <laughs> Why not get in touch? <laughs> yeah. That's Rick, a what are your views <laughs> on, on Rick Witter from Shed 7? Uh, Rick Witter, I, I, you know, I, I like their effort. Okay. I think he's, he's quite, uh, you know, uh, got a nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chakademus and Pliers? <laughs> What was their hit? Uh, tease me, tease me, tease me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more of that next time, I'm sure. Oh, that's it. Are we, are we straight to the song for the ladies now? Or yeah, song for the ladies. Yeah, let's... Should we just get it over with? Yeah, let's knock it this on the head. Song for the ladies this week, one of the best tracks on Hour of the Bewildered Beast by Badly Drawn Boy. It's, of course, Magic in the Air for all the ladies. Bye. Sorry about that. We're going to really be good gonna next week. Happy birthday, or...? Happy birthday to you. But no, we're going to be... We're going to start work on next week's we're show. Really, it, from then on, it'll be year zero. Yeah. Yeah, we're all here. Oh, oh, oh I can't wait. I can't believe it. We've got some great stuff coming up, Steve. Well, got I'm, I'm being honest. Go on. There's some great tunes. Yeah. We've got, oh, uh, it's, there's too many to mention. Don't mention them. Well, there's, there's about 20, actually. Is there? We could mention them. Looking forward to them. Um, I've got, I've got a brand new feature okay. as well. You know, I'll do my film with you. Loving it. And, uh, you know, we do run for the covers and mm. song for the lovers and all mm. that. Got a new feature. Go on. That film sounds good. Right. It's not the film review. It's a it's a track from a film. That's brilliant, Rick. Yeah. That's absolutely That film sounds good. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. People will be desperate to look forward to that. And there'd just be some chat as well. There'd just be some nattering. Carl, have we got anything to give away this week? No. 
Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. I quite like giving stuff away. It yeah. It makes me feel quite powerful. Does, you know, in the week, is there any meetings like, oh, what should we give, like, Ricky and Steve to give away? Because, I mean, I'll see lots of trailers for The Breakfast Show and that Enterprise and that. Or do they go, they go, who? <laughs> no. It comes Saturdays. Saturdays? What? I, I don't work Saturdays. No, but it, it's still on the air Saturdays. Is it? Who listens on a Saturday? Yeah. Between I one and three. Oh, that's the worst time, <laughs> isn't it? They, so, they sort of hear you, you know, taking the mickey out of, of what tickets you're given. And yeah. I think this week you could have had St. Etienne, but they said no. We'll hold them back. I you love her being punished. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you what we've been punished for, for being subversive and rock and roll. Yeah. Is that a crime, Rick? I don't think so. No. High five. No, I'm <laughs> You've got to hit the hand, yeah, otherwise well, it, it sounds it's embarrassing. You're a lot taller than well, me, aren't just you? Just hit high five. Yes. Play Sweet. Record. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club there in Love Burns, XFM 104.9. We're really swinging now. We are. It's so happening. much better than last week. Last week was a point I don't want to talk about. Well, it wasn't too bad, actually. Was it? Apparently. No, um... I, I, you know, I said, oh, we were really off and Steve was hungover and I was tired and we couldn't be bothered. And uh, they were going, no, it's as good as any other week. No. Which is pretty disappointing, isn't it? You want them to go, well, I'll tell you what, it was the worst one ever and it was still brilliant. <laughs> it was still magnificent. As opposed to, yeah. it was one of the best. <laughs> but rubbish. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. So we're going to really... We've, you know, yeah, we're going to up, up the ante today. Yeah. Come Ooh. on, Carl. Cheer let's up. Let, let's make this, Carl, let's make this the best show ever. All right. Should we have a big group hug? Yeah. Oh, Carl, come let's on. Have, no, let's have a big group lick. Yeah. Carl, oh, come on. look at his little oh, face. Look at his face. You can see why the ladies love him. <laughs> He's a cute guy. No, you're a cute guy. And I'm not having a go. I genuinely think you are, so don't have a go back at me. Oh, I've got some news for you, Steve. Go on. Where is it? Carl, oh, where is that thing? Right, here are. Company magazine are compiled in a 50 most eligible bachelors feature. Ding dong. The May issue 2002, right? These are the requirements, right? Single... Right? Hello. That means available, not just unmarried. Just, you know, okay. uh, age 20 to 30, you're well in there. I'm straight in there. Uh, um, C. Um, D. What was C? C is, um, it's, it says good looking. Uh, Fine, yeah, I'm eligible so far. And it says going. not, ne oh no, this is what rules you out probably. It says not necessarily Brad Pitt-esque. And you are a little bit. <laughs> well, um, so they say. Uh, it must be British and come from one of the following uh, regions. London. Southeast, Southwest, you're there. That's me. I, I think they just name all the regions of Britain. Yes, they right. could just say from Britain. You really? Um, imp employ. What? Well, sorry, Carl, go on. Is there a height restriction on this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're So, what is this? What, is this a serious yeah. thing? What yeah. is it? It's the most eligible bachelor. I, I, this is so me. Do you know any of the boys who'd be perfect for us company girls? Past bachelors have included TV presenters Dermot O'Leary. Yeah. Hey, I'm in with Dermot O'Leary. He knows me. He's not really yeah. on, isn't he? Yeah. Jamie Thiexton. It's, it's, not, it's not most eligible person who knows a bachelor. The models, Rob Warrington and James Polanski. Yeah. Uh, the singers, Lyndon David Hall and Richard Blackwood. Yeah. Wouldn't necessarily consider him a singer. Uh, Controversial. I'm so He's there. having a dig at Blackwood. Hey, I'll tell you this. I was watching... Uh, or I, I don't suppose watch it, but I saw the trailer for The Farmer Wants a Wife. Oh, yeah. Right, which is which the show which you mentioned. You yeah, it? you did. Which yeah. is a show where I think farmers, because obviously it's very difficult for them to meet women. Wants a wife? And I'm thinking, hello, I dear, Steve Merchant wants a wife. It's not bad, It's is a it? TV show. Who sounds a bit like a farmer. <laughs> exactly. This is, this well, what is I'm good. saying is I don't mind the public voting for the woman, you know, if, if that's how it happens. I don't mind, you know, because... Who, who cares? You know, yeah. I, I'll do. I'll, I'll have anything. Whatever they can choose, <laughs> be fine. You know. See that? I think yeah. Steve Merchant wants a farmer. That'd be even better. <laughs> Steve Merchant wants it. Yeah, Steve Merchant wants it. I'm thinking, um, sort of the, maybe the Bravo Channel on cable. Yeah. You know, or ITV Two. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah a, it's an idea, Rick. I'm just flying out the flagpole. Yeah, well, we're, we're thinking about that. Yeah. Um, phone. Don't phone in. It's not worth it. Let's play some more music. There is a Slim Shady in all of us. That was Eminem, XFM, 104.9. Steve? Yeah, no, I was just, actually, I was just thinking, because Carl, uh, I'm probably thinking, you know, he likes to have a little dig every so often about, you know, uh, my success with the ladies. No, 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 Carl, but I tell you, you'd have been proud of me last night. No, listen, you'd have been proud of me. Because I was walking back from the shops, uh, I was carrying two cans of wheat lager. It was Friday night, Rick. Yeah. Time to go a bit crazy. Yeah. And there was this woman coming the other way, who must have been sort of 50, 55, just staying on the street, dressed in kind of like rhinestone cowboy style outfit. Really weird. Never seen her before. Parton? <laughs> was it Parton? It wasn't Dolly. No. And she was just staggering down the road, like just, ah, just showing. And some truck drove by, and she just went, oh, come over here, come over here. 
and uh, and the car just drove by or whatever and she walked into me and she she saw me coming and she saw the beer in my hand she couldn't believe her luck and she stopped and she tried to stop me and i sort of stepped one side so step one way to try and go past her she stepped there and blocked my way so she blocked the other way and she went come here come here like trying to motion and i was really scared it was you, like some it you was looked like around some, and thought beggars can't be jesus well, this is, but then for a minute i was thinking <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Friday night. <laughs> you know, I'm in a mood to make whoopee. But um, I thought it's probably best to avoid it. And I actually managed to uh, run away and uh, avoid her. And she just kept shouting at me as I was running down the road, come come, come with me, come with me. But I legged it. But what I was thinking, it was like some kind of, like, sort of Hansel and Gretel nightmare. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. an old lady in your way. You're going and there and there's loads of other people that look just like you. <laughs> exactly. And they're yeah. getting very, very thin. We've been here for years. In yeah. chains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I thought you'd be proud of me. No, there was, that, that was, you know, that was a woman on a plate. So to speak. And, uh, and I just turned it down. And, uh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, exactly, you see? You so went not, home, not you so went, desperate. Uh, he, he, he got in and went, what have I done? <laughs> Seeing her again tonight, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to hang around by the off offy, see what happens, you know. <laughs> Looking forward to Christmas? Loving it. I'm always a big fan of Christmas, actually. Yeah, no, I'm not a bad humbug type. It's, it's, not, it's not far now, is it? It's, uh, it's this month now, is it? Is it? Are is we in the, December? Is it the first? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we, um, brilliant. We, uh, well, I, I was quite excited because um, <laughs> this week in the, I think it was this week in the papers, the Sun, um, and I think all the other papers actually, uh, had the, the first of the kind of giveaway uh, TV supplements that oh, comes up listing all the that. shows that are on. But one of the t the, when they bring them out this early is you open it and it's like, you think, yeah, I want to see what films are on and stuff, and you go through it and it just, about half of the listings are to be confirmed. To be confirmed, it's utterly it's an utter waste of time. Yeah, and it's like, but it's like, who is planning their film, their film and TV watching this early? Yeah, it's a little bit early to be worrying about. Three it. weeks in advance, going, oh, but I better not make any. Well, unless it's like a you know an amazing thing on telly, or you you know. Be, Are you, you coming to a party? We got one uh, Friday twenty ninth. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna watch something on the TV. It's a good film. What is it? Not been confirmed yet. It's to just... be confirmed. <laughs> yeah. but I can just you know. Say this, I won't be at the party. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. But I remember when I was um, little, my sister used to work in WH Smith's, and uh, uh, she used to come home like every Thursday. She'd been paid, big bag of sweets for Lovely. me. And, uh, you know, the, the, the TV Times. The TV Times, of course, because you're yeah. working class. Sort the TV of. Times. The Radio Times for a class, you're a middle yeah. class gentleman but, like myself. But the, the bumper edition at Christmas, that was, it's like two weeks of telly, she'd sit down, like that Thursday night, sit down with Miss Sweets, and we'd tick off all the things we were going to watch over the That's next really two tragic. years. Didn't happen, did it? Because I, you know, I was squeaking around, hyperactive, making people play with toys mm. and stuff, and not watching telly, really. I but bet I mean, you, but if you watched any telly, it'd have been really rubbish stuff. The whole family was like, I imagine probably Dennis Norden's Laughter File, Volume 12, or whatever it is. I don't think you've Dennis Norton was going then. Whereas, you see, we, in our house, of course, we'd often not, we'd just switch off the TV and we'd yeah. perhaps just listen, you know, you to the concerto to. on Radio 3. Ooh, yeah, yeah, we weren't allowed to turn the telly off, really. So. I don't know what a concerto is, I've just said that word. I'm I assuming... don't know what a concerto is. It's like a, just a posh word for concert, isn't it? I think so. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. What's a concerto? It's one of those, maybe it's one of those instruments, the kind of squeeze box. That's a concertina. concertina. It's a concertina. Yeah, yeah. My nan used to play a concertina. Really? Yeah, I don't know if that's interesting to you. I don't know why you choose the concertina of all the instruments to play. I mean, it's well, not the sexiest, it's only kind of sailors well, my, well, normally. Well, my nan used to have one, but she doubled up with, uh, as an iron lung. Nice. Which was good. And so when she, you know, when she had a bit of an attack, mm. we not only were warned, yeah. but we had a little tune. That's beautiful. As well, yeah. Could you play your grand? You can play your grand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Once she had a bit of an accident, she said, sit down, kids, and she came in there, and she had a corrugated neck. Ah, uh, of course. Where, where it had gone. Horribly wrong. It's, go on. Sorry, what were you going to say? It's it happening again, Steve. What's happening? It's going all wrong. Yeah. We're talking rubbish. Are we? Yeah. We should have played two in a row. He's having a go, isn't he? Blimey. Gorillas, Rock the House. Yeah. XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. Sweet. together again. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> the old team. They said it never happened. Plus happen. Carl, he presses the buttons. Yeah, not draw attention yeah. to right. him. Okay. We were talking about um, squeeze boxes. Yes. And uh, it got me to thinking, what's happened to them? You don't see them. Do you know what I mean? Instruments should be around forever. You know what I mean? The piano forte, as <laughs> oh, I call it's it. It's a classic. Around forever. They invented it. It's around. You know, the saxophone was only, I think, the 20s or 30s. Mm. But, you know, I can't imagine it going away. There's squeeze a number of instruments probably dying out. Lute. <laughs> the lute. The lute you rarely see now. You rarely see, uh, except maybe on a um, Men Without Hats. What was Men so, Without Hats? Or Marillion. Right, right. Men Without yeah. Hats. We can dance if we want to. And Pierre Trudeau's daughter was in that video. Who was that we saw in a sandwich shop yesterday? Well, 
he might not want us. To, he might want to be no, people to know that he was in a sandwich shop. It's fine. It just shows that he's he didn't human. Recon- Bruce Dickinson. He didn't recognise him. I went. Look, Bruce you know, Dickinson from yeah. Iron Maiden. I had no Little idea. Fella, wasn't he? I'd Little say bit, he's yeah. really tiny. It was yeah. almost laughable. Is he it married? That annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you just alienated yourself from a lot of heavy metal fans now because yeah. he's Ooh, pretty I'm much scared. of a guru. They never leave their bedrooms, Rick. They, yeah, but they've got powers. <laughs> yeah, if they're, they're putting crystals now on toads, <laughs> and they're going to turn you into a. <laughs> <laughs> All no. right. All right. Well, no. Let's have a go. I so wasn't having a go. I show. stopped myself, realizing it wasn't much of a threat. Rick, right. Go on. What else is dying out? Pipes. <sighs> Pipes. You never see people smoking pipes. Why Young people you? now are not smoking pipes. No. You see old people, you're right, but kids, you've got to start taking up pipes, otherwise they're going to die out. Because <laughs> yeah. people of the older <laughs> generation, they're, they're going to die did, soon. Did, I'm not smoking a pipe. I should with be. With pipes, though, did, w- was it like the fashion where when you smoked, you started, you know, at uh, a young age and then carried on? Or did you just start at 50? But no, because if you see, like, um, sort of shots of kind of, uh, you know, sort of prof- professorial types yeah. from the 1930s, at yeah. st- when they were at Oxbridge, yeah. they're always smoking pipes in a tweed jacket. Yeah. That was when they started, like, university. Yeah, but they still do. So yeah, I mean, no, but... I don't, there's no, lots be- of things that should die out in the rest of the world, carry on in Oxbridge colleges. Yeah, but my point is... Boaters. That, all right, all right. All I'm saying is that they're not even in Oxbridge now, they're not even smoking pipes. I bet there is There's someone. no one smoking pipes. I bet there is. Right, I'd like to know, if there's anyone listening who's under the age of 30 that smokes a pipe regularly, and I don't mean like a crack pipe... And I, and I guarantee they went to Oxford or Cambridge. <laughs> okay, yeah. what's the number? Oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. What's the email? ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk Pipes are dying out. Yeah. Snuff, that's as good as gone. Yeah. Snuff. Sn- yeah, trilbies. My friend always said if he won, like, loads of money on the lottery, he'd like to try really hard to try and bring back, as a fashion accessory, the cape. Because uh, the capes like, are classy. I quite like the cape. The cape's brilliant, because you can kind of, you know, kind of mask your face with it. Yeah. Dracula-like. You can have it off, but still on, and on, but still off. It's exactly. like a coat. You know what I mean? Where you drape it over your shoulders and that can fall down. Carl, you're not a fan of the cape. You're turning your nose up. But the cape, that's a madness. No pockets. <laughs> Good point. You could have some kind of inner sort of smuggler's if pocket. They did that, poacher's one. pocket. <laughs> if they did that, I'd buy one. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, that sounds good. It's that sounds good. It's just gone half past. It's the new picture. <laughs> I can't believe that it. That sounds good. I, for a minute there, I was completely lost. Yeah. Remind me again, what's that well, sounds good? Uh, I, I thought, will... no, hang on, it's that film sounds good. Oh yeah, <laughs> that film sounds good. <laughs> right, this isn't this isn't my famous film review, which I've got coming up. Right. Look forward to that. It's brilliant. Yes, it's it's quite a delicate subject, but I think I deal with it sensitively. Brilliant. Okay. Um, this is that film sounds good. Right, and I've taken. Remind us again what that is. What this? Well, is? it's I'm going to pick a song from a, a film. Okay. That's on a, from the soundtrack, right? Yes. I'm choosing a song from uh, Jackie Brown. Okay. Great film. Yeah, brilliant film. And this is Across 110th Street by Bobby Womack. It's fantastic. Wonderful song. You'll only like this if you're really cool. Yeah, if you're really cool, like, say us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby Womack, Across 110th Street. It's great, isn't it? That's a lovely feature, And that was, that's the first feature. Ooh, that film sounds good. Brilliant. Yeah? Brilliant, yeah. That's I'm excellent. thinking of actually bringing out maybe a compilation of... Uh, I'd love to hear it. ...Song for the Lovers. Maybe. What sort of things can we hear, can we, can we expect in the future? Uh, I know you're a big fan. Uh, this is brilliant. He bought, right, the soundtrack <laughs> to the film Braveheart, <laughs> which is just well, kind of... No, let me just well, explain. Which is just kind of big or- orchestrated numbers, right? James and Warner. As far as he's concerned, that's classical music. <laughs> he's got a classical music CD in his collection. It's the music from Braveheart. <laughs> oh... Oh, I sit there and I think, yeah, mate, I'd probably sort of lead my people's, yeah. you know... He's obsessed uh, with Braveheart. He actually sort of relates to William Wallace. He actually thinks, yeah, that's the sort of thing I'd be doing. Yeah, he is. No. What was it you were working out to the other day as well? He's, you know he's got like a personal, like, gymnast <laughs> or whatever. It's, what's it called? Is it a gym gym no. expert? A no, trainer? No, You've got I, a personal... I, I box with this bloke. Yeah, he goes boxing him. in like some underpass somewhere. <laughs> Right, every day, like, no sing, like every single every day, day, he goes boxing. Right, but and what was it you were training? What did you tell me oh you were training to this week? God. What oh, music this, did this, you have on? Oh my god, I have, I have actually. Now I never do this, but I have actually gone red, haven't I? Yes. Right. It's I very was, hard to embarrass. I was working. I was working out and training and boxing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're gonna have to play a record after this. To the Rocky soundtrack. To the Rocky soundtrack. He's bought, right, a CD which has got the best music from all of them. Now, was it Eye of the Tiger or was it... <laughs> it starts up with Eye of the Tiger, then it goes, Ah, 
heart's on fire. That's me sort of right as well. Then it goes dun 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 dun. That's dun dun dun. Does any of your training with your with your uh, trainer does it ever involve you running through snow with a log chained to your back? <laughs> yeah, like in Rocky and helping. I, I was often have to help Russian peasants because their <laughs> their cart horse is like falling over, but I lift it up. Whereas the other fella, he's training in a posh gym, having injections. I'm not. I'm just like breaking rocks and yeah. punching dead cows. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that from? It's handy, wasn't it? Put it on. No, what is it? That's the only he can't hear because he's got his. Put your headphones on. Why? Was it? You'll love it. it. You'll love it. it. Yeah. That's magnificent. Yeah. That's now Ricky Gervais's theme tune. Yeah. Every time we start the show, we should just start with that. Win, Ricky, win. <laughs> <laughs> you two, walk on. I've got to give it to him. Hated you two for about 15 years. You said like it before, really I know, I know, but I love that one now. Mm -hmm. I just love that album. I, oh. I can't put a foot wrong. Do you ever listen to the whole album? Because I know you tend to buy albums just for the singles. <laughs> when you could, of course, just buy the singles. Uh, it's, I know where he's going. I bought light, funky ones. Oh, you know I wanted to say that. Yeah, I bought light, funky ones because I... <laughs> the <laughs> light, <laughs> funky ones. Do you remember the light, funky ones? That was about, like, a year ago. <laughs> what did they uh, do? They did Girl uh, in a Green Dress, yeah, Girl yeah, on yeah, TV. And, uh, Abercrombie That one Fitch. that, oh, yeah, Summertime Abercrombie <laughs> and Fitch. The girls are wearing up. Do you remember that? It's like a light, sort of, summer... Listen, nonsense. I've got a lot of money. It's nothing to me. Okay, <laughs> the light. I, I want a bit of light, funky ones once. That's fifteen quid. It's nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> you put the two singles on, right? Never listen to the rest of the album. <laughs> I never listen to the two singles no. again. Either. The light, funky ones. <laughs> oh, it's just uh, the, my street cred's gone down it. Rocky soundtrack and the light, funky ones. You'd make two mistakes. Right, let's not forget Braveheart, the soundtrack. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's a good film. Rick, we were talking earlier about stuff True story about a little Australian freed the Scottish. The stuff that's dying out that we... I think you and I single-handedly need to kind of uh, resurrect and salvage. Yeah. I thought the Trilby was dying out. Yeah. I'll surprise I you. And yet, was well, watching yeah. Top of the Pops last night, yeah. Jamiroquai was wearing one, and then lo and behold, Danny Minogue came on. She had one as well. I thought, blimey. There's two people there trying to salvage the Trilby and good really? luck Really? Well, yeah. that's on its way then. Let, let them the do The Trilby's that. fine. Let's do some else. But the bowler hat. Ah, the bowler hat. You never see, see the bowler. I always fancy myself in the bowler hat. I love hat. a bowler hat. Carl, would you wear a bowler hat? You, I know you'd wear the cape. I did wear a Trilby. You wear a Trilby, really? Mm. You must have looked like a... That's brilliant. What? Because you're a Mancunian. <laughs> well, there was a phase, wasn't there, in about 90... When was it? I think that was just round your way. <laughs> it might have been. It was in Manchester. They still get a job lot of Trilbys. And that persuades you kids. Yeah, yeah, tell what's trendy. No, you know, no, Sean Ryder is one of these. Does he, yeah? Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Quid. And then everyone in your street had Trilbys on. But you've never worn a bowler? Never. What about Kangol bowler? You if might think about it. Out again. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I, I would like to wear a bowler hat in a, in a dark hat, but I'm worried I look like one of those little fellas off the Home Pride advert. The Home Pride guys, they've been persevering with the bowler for years. They still look good in it, though, They're still they? looking good. They're dapper guys. Yeah. There's a lot of, um... The Jolly Green Giant, he had quite a distinctive look, which is obviously one I've been thinking of exploiting. What, the, the little, like um, oh, the, I know, the little, um, uh, it, sort of, like a little dress. Was it Corncroft? Cor Corncroft yeah. that made up his little skirt. Yeah. What yeah. was the Jolly Green Giant so jolly about? Probably. He was very pleased. It was kind of just been the sweet corn and the peas. No, I reckon it was his enormous jolly green knob. <laughs> I mean, he must have got up every day and gone, look at that. Ho, <laughs> <laughs> He must have been so happy. The, thing, the only thing that's like, in the case of the jolly green giant, or like when Gulliver was a giant and he was in Lilliput and all the Lilliputians, yeah. Like, yeah. they helped him out, they were feeding him and stuff. Yeah. If you're a giant like that in that yeah. situation, how do you sort of have a little sneaky... Tug. You know, a little tug, a little J. Arthur rank. I don't know, because it's like... It's, it's very like, tricky to do that. Because you're as big secretly. as their mountains, exactly. aren't you? You can't hide. They, they go, oh, you know, I mean, there's no... There's no the, well, yeah. All it, the little village probably just thought it was a tidal wave or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's pretty grim, though. Yeah. I mean, the tidal wave's pretty desperate. I know. It's how would he have gone to the mayor and said, I need... I need oh, a Kleenex the, the size, size of a yeah. tennis court. Yeah. And a gigantic copy of the Daily Star. You yeah. know what I never understood with giants? How they actually got that big in the first place, because what food was around to make them because not only were they like big big but they were mostly big they, like, did, they ate well they ate whole cows probably when yeah, carl you know it's, you it's know, not well documented carl is you know it? you know they don't actually exist and never have mm. okay right it's time for a feature i think <laughs> oh, carl i've got so there was a tv show i watched once on uh, the history channel this is the history channel yeah it was the history of werewolves Right, the history of werewolves, yeah. and the whole show is predicated on the fact that at the end we'll tell you if they ever existed or not. Yeah, just waiting. And I go, oh, come on, we're going to be late. Hold on, he's going to tell us <laughs> exactly. if they existed or not. Carl, werewolves. 
Michael Aspel was in it, and Michael Aspel is a top broadcaster and therefore would not associate himself with something that, that did not way. exist. Under the covers, time, gents. Under the covers. Cover me run up, cover, cover me bad, run for cover. Here <laughs> come the covers. <laughs> yeah. Mm, covers. I this, like cover songs. This is a cover version. Yes. Uh, this is from an album which uh, is a bit hit and miss, as these things often are. It's uh, different artists covering the songs of Leonard Cohen. You've oh, got yeah. the pixies on there. R.E.M., Nick Cave, different people. This, bizarrely, is Lloyd Cole, not someone I'm normally a fan of, but doing oh, a like version doing a version of the fantastic Leonard Cohen song at Chelsea oh, Hotel. Play it, Carl, it's beautiful. Often. Lloyd Cole doing oh. his version of Chelsea Hotel. Under the covers. Under the covers. Oh, it was a beautiful version. It's lovely. You know, that, apparently, really I think nice. it's that song Man, about, sweet. written by Leonard Cohen originally, and I think it's about his uh, brief romance with uh, Nico, who made a name, of course, oh, of with course, the Velvet Underground, Underground, and was yeah. a tragic uh, drugs victim. But it's interesting, because I'm looking at this, this is a compilation called I'm Your Fan, which is cover songs of Leonard Cohen's music. And as I say, R.E.M., there's people on the Nick Cave who are still going. There's a couple of names you don't tend to hear of that often now. The House of Love. Oh, yeah. Rarely hear them, do you? Um, that Petrol Emotion. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Petrol Emotion. Yeah. Uh, who else we got on here? Uh, it says Robert Forster. Now, is he a musician, or is it... I don't... Robert Forster, I don't know. Well, if you know um, <laughs> who Robert Forster is, I thought it was a writer. The Lilac Time. The Lilac Time. <laughs> They're on there as well. <laughs> you can't uh, just say the name of a band and laugh. <laughs> you can if it's the lilac time. <laughs> well, oh. um, we were... Did I tell you before that we, my friend and I once listed words we thought should be rude, th but aren't, like cassock, we always thought. Yeah, and, bollards. Uh, he, bollards. And he always pointed out the blow monkeys. Yeah. Which I always... Yeah, it, could a, <laughs> it could be a very rude word, oh. but isn't. It isn't. Okay, that could be fine. a new feature, couldn't it? Mm. We're featured up, aren't we? Aren't we? This is we've brilliant. This is we've still got the film review to come. Song for Lovers is coming up in a few minutes. Song for the Ladies. Yeah, Song for the Ladies. Uh, um, if I got? can squeeze in a hip-hop track, I'd love to do it. Yeah, that's that's called our hip-hop track bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing. Do we have a classic song, Rick? What what were you thinking of? Oh, I don't know, maybe something by um, Nirvana? Well, there's, there's, well, their biggest classic, you mean? Ideally. Smells like teen spirit. It's going well, isn't it? It's, I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. Well... I'm looking forward to Pop Idol. Pop Idol? I've not been watching it. I, You're I, joking? Yeah, I don't know what's happened, really. I've lost interest. Oh, well, it's, it is like most things. Like, the the, the, the preliminary rounds, um, Always that's when time. all the real freaks and no-hopers, you know. Um, but some of, I, I, sometimes I watch those sort of things, and I sort of laugh, and I think, oh, dear, I shouldn't be laughing at him, because he's not just rubbish, he's verging on the mentally ill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Some of those people that go along, you want to go... Who, who told you to go along? What what were you thinking? Right? Well, it's the fact that there was no one to stop them going. That's what's even more terrifying. Yeah, I know. Um, and uh, Simon Cowell's good. Oh, you're he's missing, great value, yeah. He's amazing. Foxy. I like Foxy now. I know, I've warmed to He's uh, come round, Dr. Dr. Fox. He's a, he's a lovely little shiny tree Now, often of I notice he's not always there week, week in week. Is that because he's off doing medical... <laughs> Operations. He's got his practice still. He's got the practice, he's got to maintain that. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, is is on Isn't uh, it the big ones tonight? I mean, when I say the big ones... <laughs> capital Radio, he's still on... <laughs> capital Radio, yeah. that he's got yeah. to do. So, uh, you know... Isn't got... it some of the big names, though? It's, uh, Darius Dinesh tonight. It's Darius and the Fat Boy. And the Fat Guy, The big yeah. thing that makes you... Oh, I noticed in the Sun today is saying, vote for me because of my mu musical talent, not because I'm huge and you feel sorry for me. Yeah, well, that's good. I mm. think that's right. But he's, he's he has got a great... Darius, know, I noticed, he's shaved his beard off. He looks... He's a, he's a new man. He looks slightly laughable, though. He's got quite a weak chin. He's having a laugh. Well... He's dissing Darius for I'm not looks. claiming to be a pop star. Well... Oh, can you feel the love in the room? Yeah, that's a little song. No, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, my favourite all the way through has been the little fella with the stutter. I'd like Darius to get... You know, yeah, I think he's, it's almost certain he's going to win. I don't think I there's think any excitement so. Or that Welsh girl, who was very good. Oh, yeah. The one that made Pete Waterman cry. Yeah. That yeah. was great. Yeah. Um... She uh, looks good, though, wasn't she? she yeah, good, they're yeah. great. They're, they're really good. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice to see Fatty get some he's recognition. Too I mean, he's just a weird shape, though. It's, it, it, it turns my stomach, and I'm one That's to talk. On. No, I know. He's just, you know... He's just doing his job. It's, you know, glandular. Yeah. It's not as greed. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, he's got a good voice, and why not? We've good had, luck to him. We've had Demis Roussos in the charts. Yeah. Alison Moye. There's not been a Fatty for a while, has there, who's been a big star? Uh, I mean, Moye may well have been the last one. Jer um, Jerry, what's it? She sorted herself out after becoming famous. She was pretty big, wasn't she? Who? Jerry Halliwell? Yeah. yeah she, she was never a bloater. Have you seen this bloke off Pop Idols? <laughs> yeah. It's like he's got three Jerry Halliwell strapped to his waist and then wearing a big coat over the top. <laughs> to smuggle them in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, a, to a no Halliwell zone. I reckon he's, I tell you what he's gonna do, I reckon he's gonna take it off and it's just a big fat outfit and it was like to prove, you know, the prejudice of the world. Yeah. All right. Yes. Hey. And how come that little fellow with the starter doesn't start when he's singing? Hold yeah. on. 
Hold on. Well, that's, I bet, that's cleaned up, actually. I, I bet she's that's not up, even and... Welsh. <laughs> exactly. Steve. But apparently, is, apparently Darius is not a knob. Dandy Warhols on XFM 104.9. About 20 past two, the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's still here. The Christmas ads have come on, I notice. They're on now. And I noticed, I was watching last night, I watched on telly last night, and, um, do you think that the, uh, advertising executive for Cabra's Roses Chocolates just comes in once a year and they go, what you got this year? And he goes, what about some workmen and some old ladies singing thank you very much, thank you very, very much, yeah. just shot in a street somewhere? Yeah, that'd be fine. It worked last year. Yeah, pretty much. Every, so that's been going, like, like since I can remember, they've never. I've never seen a, another advert for Cabri's Roses except there's, that. Exactly. Well, there's certain things that conjure up Christmas, like you, you, you got your turkey and all that, and yeah. you got your, you got your roses. Yeah. Walrus. Walrus. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got all. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. Walrus. <laughs> Drink driving. <laughs> Oh dear! I, God, sorry, I forgot what I went in for. Um, <laughs> what were we doing? We were right. doing something. Be careful! There's something. a lot of money involved here, yeah. Steve. <laughs> oh, you can't don't, say don't, it. don't stitch me up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I was reading the paper this week that uh, Charlotte Church, yeah, you know, little kind of singing sensation. She's been slagging off the firemen who've been um, salvaging people and and stuff. No, she hasn't stuff. been slagging yeah. them off. Well, Be apparently, I, no, what but I saw the news. Say? I saw the news that she's uh, apparently, and she claimed that she'd been misinterpreted. Right. But the N Channel 5 News thought this was a big enough story to say that Charlotte Church had been um, saying that the September 11th tragedy had been blown out of proportion. Right. Uh, she's been just slagging off the firemen. No, but that's what they said. They said that she f she felt that they, they were being held as kind of heroes and they were just doing their job. Right. Oh, well, that is, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a little bit stupid to say anyway, a little bit insensitive and, you know, yeah. But it's right. sort of, because it's like, did you read about... Why, why do you care? Why does anyone care but who's what she her? thinks about September 11th yeah. anyway? It's the same as those things like, during a presidential election, or, when well, I'm actually, it's, it's, it's these things they picture, Billy Piper says, I've always voted Labour. <laughs> I know. Who's going to go, go, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, H from Steps, he's a Conservative, hold on, what's going on? Yeah. I don't know if he is or not. I'm, I don't I'm, know, I'm well, I know just, that, um, You know, that was just an example. I don't know, I don't know what either of them vote, to be honest. All right, let's not get into it. Yeah. I Go think Faye and, Faye and Claire from Stets are both BMP members. I can't... I remember reading that somewhere. That's but so not true. I that cannot is be so certain. untrue. He cannot takes that back certain. now. I cannot be certain. Right. I think that it is misread. definitely untrue. I read it on the net and it's often wrong on the net. Right. Definitely, definitely he's going to retract that now, aren't Definitely. You? Yeah, well, I'm saying, I'm saying I, it's almost certainly untrue I read it on the net. Oh, right. Yeah, and those things are always untrue. Okay. All right. It's dissed the net now. Yeah. You dissed oh the net. I can't you, believe it. Let's dig ourselves out of this hole now. Well, uh, Blue, now I definitely can quote this because yeah. I read it in the sun. Yeah. Blue were being uh, interviewed by, uh, you know, Blue the pop band Blue. All rise. Have you bought that album yet, Rick? I imagine that I would be on yeah, your no, Christmas I like list. it. One for the money and the, the free ride. ride. Yeah. Anyway, Blue um, were being interviewed by The Sun for when they were going to web chats by uh, the lovable Dominic Mohan. Yeah. And uh, for some reason they got around to September 11th and one of the members of Blue said, again, church-like, yeah. um, I thought he's being blown out of all proportion, what about all the whales and elephants that are dying oh, every yeah. day? And the other band were going, shut up. Yeah, shut they were, it was funny, they gave but a they, transcript of it going, shut they, up. They had to do a, um, a retraction. He said, sorry, I didn't know. I'll... Yeah, it was it. He said, I'm, I, I, obviously, I'm very passionate about whales and elephants, and uh, perhaps, perhaps a bit misplaced. All the proceeds that I'll receive from our next single, I'm going to give to the September 11th Foundation. Yeah, and then he went, can I give some to the whales? No, <laughs> you've done it again. <laughs> you've done it again. Don't, don't worry about the whales. But this is what I mean. It's, why are people asking the members of Blue? Yeah. You know, or Atomic Kitten, what yeah. they think about September the 11th. I know. They should just be working in a chippy, those people. They're lucky, <laughs> they're lucky to be on the telly. <laughs> the, set, the, the Atomic Kitten girls, really, I mean, do they not look like they should be in a chip shop? <laughs> or just uh, hanging around outside an offie drinking diamond white cider? They will be soon. They will be soon. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Although Hearsay's new single, I've dissed Hearsay before, but they've come out with a, a you know, a little poppy thing. I think Can I surprise right. you, Rick? I Go prefer on. Liberty. I prefer Liberty as well. Yeah, a little bit funky, a little bit with more yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, XFM 104.9. Once again, our opinions on current <laughs> pop bands. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, you'd like to have your... Uh, hold on, though. Go on, shoot. Isn't it about time for, one, you know, a hip-hop track? Have yeah. we got it? Can you sing it? Song for the Lovers would be good. Song oh, for the Lovers. Oh, right? I'll do that now. Oh, the song for the Lovers. Now, this is a beautiful song. It's by Simon and Garfunkel. It's only one minute 49 long. It's it's called April Come She Will. It's the song for the lovers. Play it really. See, I'd quite like to put out a compilation like Song for the Lovers, maybe, you know what I mean? But I'm worried, obviously the title's ironic, we're taking the mickey out of those things, but quite serious about the, all the songs we play. Yeah, exactly. I'm worried about it, people perceive it a bit like Simon Bates' R-Tune album yes, or yeah. something. Steve Wright's Sunday Love Songs. Yeah, yeah. 
but um people lovely. Say, yeah when you yeah. think that you listen to like some dance track you buy it and it's like five minutes long the same thing repetitive beats yeah and then you hear that a minute and a half classic do you know what i mean hey have i made my point rick i think, I think so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh the youngsters yeah. are if anyone knows what my point was there please <laughs> give us a yeah, call. phone in and he's made it well <laughs> yeah carl have you got some what have you got lined up for us some rem i don't oh, know about the, oh Strokes on XFM 104.9, it's the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Steve Merchant, Cheers. Carl Pilkington. The K-Man. Well, it's, uh, time for the, well, I think people wait for this now. I never knew, really, since I was doing the show, that I actually had a bit of a knack for film reviews. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because... I discovered I try and talent, get, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably, probably be asked soon by Barry Norman or Jonathan Ross to do something on that sort of thing, or maybe my own film, mm, so mm, I don't mm, know, mm, mm, TV or... The anyway. clock's ticking, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, okay, th this week I've chosen, uh... Well, wait uh, a minute, let's play the jingle. Okay. The film review and that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Ricky yeah. Gervais. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, here we go. This week I've chosen My Left Foot. Right. Okay. Now, My Left Foot is a film about a bloke called Daniel Day-Lewis, who's all mental, except for, um, his left foot, right? But, and he has arguments... I can't remember, he had something with his dad, so I wasn't watching it properly. But he, even though he's mental apart from the foot, he does stuff with the foot that we could, we not, you know, could do all over. And he uses that to his best. I think he might write a book or something off paint. And the moral of this story is, you know, even if you're, you've only got a foot that works, you can still win prizes because it won the Oscar. Okay. Um, am I right in saying that you're bringing a book out of these, collected, maybe for the Christmas market? I think I might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see there's obvious, great, obvious great market films there. reviewed, sort of, in what with, with, it's a different, it's a different outlook on it. Mm. Isn't mm. It? A different approach. I'm yeah. just, I don't just sort of like stray. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an approach that doesn't really use grammar. <laughs> which, uh, which you don't see that often in film reviews. Um, <laughs> but no, once again, what would you give it out of ten? Uh, I just say, uh, I didn't really concentrate, I can't remember a lot okay. about it. But it won a, an Oscar, so I think it won an Oscar all summer, so nine. Okay. <laughs> well, that was My Left Foot, which is probably available on sell through video, maybe in a bargain uh, bin. Five ninety nine, probably on TV this Christmas. That's to be confirmed. Eels, fresh feeding on XFM 104.0. It's going well, isn't it? I'm enjoying it, yeah. 20 minutes yeah. to go, I think, you know. More okay. of an up show. We've made some great hits and great songs. Oh, great we? We've got some great features. A new feature. That film sounds good. Looking forward to that. That, that, that run week. and run. Yep. Um, song for the lovers. If there's any record companies out there, the one I put out a compilation song of my songs for lovers. Yeah, yep. uh, that's good. Uh, anyone who wants me to do a film, anything, any film you want. Yeah, uh, reviewed. Yeah, reviewed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, finish the sentence. Yeah. No, ideally, because oh, right. it was otherwise. It was anyone who wants me to do a film. Well, of course, oh, being okay. a top actor, yeah, you'd have sure, appeared in the film. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that. It's <laughs> so, really good. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, you're running out of steam. I can you're tell. You're running out. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Carl. Have you seen it yet? I know you probably haven't, Rick. Cliff Richards video for his new single. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's bad, Shot. isn't it? I, I saw it on Lorraine Kelly in the morning. Sky One. Great yeah. show. And. Um, <laughs> And it's amazing. It's it's he's done a version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but he's oh, combined that. No. He's combined that with um uh, what's it? It's uh, oh what a be oh what a wonderful world. I wasn't really yeah. listening. I was looking at the pictures. And exactly. I can't believe it's what a wonderful yeah. world and uh, combined with Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Right? So he's done a so two classic songs, two songs mm -hmm. that have been done definitively yeah. by artists in the past. He's tried to what combine them last with a one? kind of Yamaha keyboard sound in the background. What was his last year's one? It was um, Lord's Prayer, Prayer with. Uh, over the old Lang Syne. He's just obsessed with combining two songs. Like, they're not good enough as they are. People get bored, we better combine them. Yeah, yeah. It's like That's... a like a mega mix, like a cliff mega mix. And you're right, the video is unbelievable. It's him flying through. It's all kind of sort of 2D animation. Mm. Kind of almost sort of a collage of, of uh, buildings and high-rise mm. flats and that. Kids see him floating by. Yeah. They wave, they point to each other, they can't believe they're like, there goes Sir Cliff. They, they're, they're going, who's that? <laughs> exactly. He was around in the 50s. <laughs> and he's, he's just, he's got a little one-dimensional cliff with a kind of angelic glow right. flying through the sky. Just bringing happiness to people as he sings. Oh, he does. Is his real face kind of uh, every so often kind of appearing? And kind I wonder of where his real face is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's one of the worst songs and one of the worst videos I've ever seen. I mean, I know people slag off Cliff and it's an easy target, but he actually deserves it because he's shameful. Um, yeah, he's I think embarrassing. So, yeah. yeah, he's embarrassing. I mean, and he's arrogant. Uh, well, everything's a disguised boast. I mean, I, you know, I like Devil Woman. I like Miss Unites. 
I liked Wired for sound, it, and I like tall speakers and small speakers. You know, <laughs> I you know, like tall you know. Speakers. I like all sizes speakers. You know that. You'll you'll vouch me on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he sang about it, which is good. And you know, I'm often wired for sound. Right. Carrie doesn't live her anymore. Where she can't. She's just another message on a payphone wall. It's a story. But lately, I haven't had a lot of time for him. Awful. I remember he was on something on uh, one chat show, and uh, I think it was Dares or Michael. Um, asked for someone, and uh, I said, uh, "So you've asked me?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, everyone um, knows that Elvis sold more records uh, after his death than when he was alive." Little dig there against Elvis. He goes, yeah. Well, um, I've just overtaken his record for sales in the UK. Right. So he sets up that Elvis. Elvis is only selling because he's dead. Yeah. And anyway, I've still beaten him in the UK. <laughs> and I just yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. Always... And where'd you get? And where'd you get the quiff from and the way to sing? Where'd you get that from, Cliff? Mm. Where, where did you think of that? But it's those people who he's just desperate for the credibility that he's never going to have. I like it when he went around last year going, "They're not playing my record. They're not playing my record. They're not playing." Oh, go on, play it. Number one. Yeah. Ha. Full It was number one. The yeah. Millennium Prayer. I know. Yeah. Well, it was. You know, it was the Millennium, wasn't it? It was, but I don't know who's buying it. I mean, I know, you seem to claim it's some kind of like six-year-old women, but they're not. Yeah, are they is, yeah. really a commercial force now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Carl seems to know that. Well. Like when you're born, you're a little baby, wrinkly and stuff. When you get older, you, you sort of morph into a baby again, and you go through the same phases. So when you're young, you buy singles. You get old, you got nothing to do all day. You got your pension money. What will I buy? Cliff Richards on the telly. Here's my video. Buy me song. You see, that started off as quite a sensible point because I actually think they do it. But what was all that alien stuff <laughs> about when you're born, you go wrinkly and you go wrinkly again? So sometimes you mix like normal things that human beings say with I don't know what. Well, look, when you're a baby, you've got oh. a little bald head, no teeth, you get old, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a philosopher? Are you an official <laughs> philosopher? Because, I mean, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, play a record. You're a gem. You're a diamond. XFM 104.9. Good to hear the happy Mondays again. We're nearly through. We are indeed. We've had a little bit of chat. We've had a few laughs. We've had a few tears. We have indeed. We've yeah. uh, we've we, we've introduced a new feature. Looking forward to that next week. Yeah. We, so we're soon it's just going to be wall to wall features, isn't yeah. it? It's going to yeah. be oh. Well, I had an amazing. idea for a feature which you didn't seem to like, which what? was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Well, explain it. And yeah. Th something well, old, an old song. Something yeah. new, a new song. Yeah. Something borrowed, a cover version. Yeah. And something blue, just a melancholy and beautiful song. Right, okay, but does it have to be all four, or can it be anyone? No, it's all four. You can play that over the course of the show. Or maybe just have oh. a set four songs in a row, and that's that section. So, so that, so, like, a feature would be like, this is either an old song or like a new song. Yeah. That's good. I think we've done that a few times. No, it's not, it's we've not covered that, that. Well, what's the difference? Play, oh, I'm playing a song from a film. Just because <laughs> you give it a title, it's just a song from a film. You can play that anyway, couldn't you? Brilliant. You, it's all you've, nonsense. You've seen, cheers, Carl. Brilliant, Brilliant yeah. Be? My ideas are good, aren't they? Mm. Because they're not only sort of accessible, but there's a little bit of depth there. I think it's fair enough to let him have his little feature at the end of the show, though. Just, you know what I mean? Oh, Keep him happy, this song for the cool. lovers. Come Excellent. Well, that's, yeah, but that's not till after Song 2 by Blair. I remember the days when Carl didn't even want to be on the air. I remember the days when he was not he was told by the establishment that he wasn't allowed to talk on the air. And now, it's like, he, as far as he's concerned, he's a third member of the team. He's protected by yeah. me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Song two by Blur. We're running out of time. It's five two. Just got time for Steve's song for the ladies. Wedding present, Rick, from the album uh, Saturnalia. I think it's pronounced like that, and it's track three, Dream World. A song Looking forward for the to ladies. it. Goodbye. Xfm.co.uk.